So you haven't pulled the trigger. You've read all the articles, you've watched all the YouTube videos, and you've drooled over all the text specs. A month later and you're still wanting to see if the hype holds up about the OnePlus 3. So does it? First, let's talk aesthetics. Now, you may treat your devices very differently than I treat mine. Whoa. Whoa. I absolutely baby my tech, and since the unboxing, the OnePlus 3 has stayed inside of the OnePlus branded thin but very nice carbon fiber case, so needless to say, the back of the OnePlus is pretty much scratch free. And thanks to high quality components everywhere else on the phone, the camera lens, the fingerprint sensor, and all of the buttons have stayed fully in perfect condition as well. The OnePlus 3 comes with a pre-installed screen protector. Now what's nice about this is it is near invisible, so you don't really notice it, but if one day it does scratch, you know that you can rip it off and put on a new one or just use the actual screen. Next up is software. OnePlus has really jumped on a lot of the criticisms that people gave the OnePlus 3 in its first month. So they came out with the Oxygen OS 3.2.1 update, which had a ton of bug fixes, and of course the biggest ones notably are the RAM management fix and a new screen mode called sRGB, which you can enable in developer options. Now what this does, I am very much a fan of it, basically makes the screen a lot more color accurate. Now if you're like my friend Greg from Greggles TV and you like vibrant screens, you may turn this feature off very quickly as it does make it more of a kind of dull and neutral toned color to the screen. And you may not be able to tell in this video much of a difference, but in person you should give it a try. I personally like it, I'm a fan, but it's really personal preference. The performance is good as ever and I have not personally had any RAM management issues but it's nice to know that I can have a million things open and no not actually a million things for all you people who take YouTube videos too literally and seriously but it's nice to know that I can jump back and forth between apps and games and things like that and not have to wait for them to refresh or reload and you can just jump back and forth very quickly as multitasking is intended. Oxygen OS continues to be a very light and powerful and fast operating system and in my experience is even faster than most Nexus devices that I've tested out. Let's talk about cameras for a second. The picture quality? Superb. Yes, the Galaxy S7 is the king of autofocus in my testing, but I'm personally not a fan of the oversaturation and over vibrance and over sharpening of the photos that come out of that phone. This is the first Android smartphone that I've wanted to actually pull out more or just as much as my iPhone. Now the video quality is very good until you press play, and what I mean by that is the quality, the dynamic range, the sharpness of the 4K, blah, 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 is all very good. Yes, 1080p, 60fps, unexcusable, please come out in a software update. But with 4K video, the choppiness and the optical image stabilization is still terrible. It's horrible. By holding it near still, you still have the crazy, jumpy, kind of jittery motions that you would get from a phone that has absolutely no stabilization at all. I've seen phones with digital stabilization better outperform this than optical. So hopefully that will come out in a software update in the near future. That is honestly probably my biggest gripe with the entire phone. And finally, battery life. The 3000 milliamp battery is doing quite well. I've said it in the past and I'll say it again. Of course, a physically bigger battery, I think, would have made this phone that much better, but for what we get, it's doing quite well. I have no issues getting through a full day with average use, and if I do really kind of sit down and play a bunch of games or do a bunch on it and I kill it some way during the day or I forget to charge it overnight, that's where dash charging has really come in to save my butt. When it first came out, I wanted wireless charging, but the dash charging honestly is just plain old amazing. And if I wake up and I need to charge my phone in under an hour, it pretty much does that, where my iPhone will only get about 30 or so percent. In an hour, you can basically fill up and recharge the entire OnePlus 3 from zero to near 100, which is pretty awesome. 
Overall, a month down the road, the OnePlus 3 is still a fantastic phone and one of my main workhorses considering my iPhone running iOS 10 is quite buggy. I really relied on this phone and it is really a powerhouse and an amazing, I'm not even going to say budget phone, just an amazing flagship device from OnePlus. But if you are still not ready to pull the trigger and you want to check out a bunch of other videos I've done on the OnePlus 3 that dive a little bit more deep into it, check those out here, they're probably floating around my head. Thanks so much guys, and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.